One of the largest and most ancient cultures on earth is that of China. It's uh, probably also the most populous culture on earth at this time. Um, there's a, a lot to be learned from Chinese civilization and the different perspectives of China. Uh, this episode uh, is going to feature Dr. Han Lao, who's going to be discussing some of his research and some of his interests in Chinese culture. Uh, Dr. Lao is originally from Singapore and uh, has worked as an ethnobotanist in a number of different places in in Asia and the Pacific Islands. Uh, so uh, uh, hopefully this will be a very interesting presentation about uh, some aspects of uh, uh, Chinese perspectives on healthcare. Uh, thank you for the introduction and thank you for having me. Hi. Hi, um, traditional Chinese medicine or TCM. Um, it is a very ancient uh, med medicinal system that has been developed by the Chinese about 3,000 years ago. And in fact, the uh, Taoism, or in fact, the uh, philosophy of uh, Taoism is very, very much instrumental in the uh, development of this uh, particular medicinal system. Um, when we talk about uh, TCM, we often think about uh, things like um, traditional uh, things like uh, medicinal herbs. But in fact, uh, TCM includes things like acupuncture, moxibustion, um, Tuina therapy and the Qigong therapy. Uh, but however, because um, this class is an ethnobotany class, I shall be focusing on the uh, uh, medicinal plants only. Uh, before I continue with this presentation, I just want to point out that uh, uh, this, this, this presentation is not meant to uh, teach you how to use medicinal plants, but really it's more to uh, introduce to you the fundamental concepts uh, that, is, that have been used to uh, develop this uh, ancient medicinal system. So the bottom line is, at the end of this presentation, please do not uh, go out and experiment with the different medicinal herbs. I always believe that in order to understand uh, TCM, one really has to understand the uh, concepts behind it. and. Two of the important concepts that I feel that one has to learn is the concept of uh, the yin and yang and the concept of the five elements. And I want to spend some time just talking about these two concepts before I turn my attention to the medicinal plants. Uh, yin and yang, as seen on this slide here, uh, the black portion is the yin and the white portion is the yang. Um, so basically, um, the the yin and yang are all uh, in constant flux with one, with one another, but the bottom, but in the midst of all this, uh, in all this change, uh, there is always this dynamic equilibrium uh, put in place. And what that really means is, whenever there is, when uh, when there is um, a disequilibrium, we're talking about a problem with the system. Uh, yin. And as shown in this slide here, yin is often being associated with, uh, with, uh, with quietness, with intuitiveness, uh, with all things that are related to female. And in fact, the earth itself is being associated with, uh, with yin because it's the source of life. Now, um, and likewise, the yang is often being associated with, uh, with things that are, uh, that are strong, things that are forceful. And in fact, the male is often being uh, associated with the yang and heaven is also being associated with yang. Uh, so things that are in constant motion, things that, uh, that brings about change, are all uh, uh, belong to the yang uh, category. So as, as you can see on this slide here, um, in the yin column, we have the moon, the night, uh, water, and coal being passive and inhibition. All these are the yin uh, category. And in the yang column, we see that the sun, the day, the fire being hot, um, being active and being excited uh, is in the yang category. Um, now, 
what about the human organs? I mean, it's, uh, the Chinese seems to be very fond of categorizing things. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, not just things around them, but things inside them. And so they have also categorized the human organs into the yin and the yang category. Uh, shown in the next slide here, we see that the yin organs, uh, which essentially refers to uh, organs that are solid. So we have the heart, the liver, the spleen, the lung, and the kidney. And what about the young organs? The young organs refers to um, organs that are hollow. So in this case, uh, we see that the, uh, the gallbladder, the stomach, the large intestine, and the bladder all belong to the, the young organs. Now, what happens when, uh, when one of these organs is misbehaving? And shown in this next slide here, we see that there is too much yin covering and it's almost covering the, the yang. So this is essentially a, known as the cold syndrome because yin is always associated with being cold and the yang associated with being hot. So in this case, we have a cold syndrome. And likewise, if we have uh, too much of the yang and too little of the yin, we have a hot syndrome. So in order to treat a hot syndrome, we have to, we have to insert, we have to either to dispel the excess hotness or the excess yang out of the system, or we pour in more yin into the system to maintain the balance. Um, and so that's essentially the, uh, the whole idea of the yin and yang in, from the perspective of uh, traditional Chinese medicine. Um, now the next concept that I want to talk about is the idea of the, the concept of the five elements. Now the um, ancient Chinese, like everyone else, uh, would look around them, make observations, and then uh, form a hypothesis. And, th and in this case, yeah, they hypothesize that the universe is made up of uh, five elements as shown here. Uh, the first one being the metal, second, second one being wood, uh, water, fire and earth. And again, they then went on and categorized all the things around them into each of these five categories. And shown in this next slide here, we see that the eye is being categorized as wood, the tongue being fire, the mouth being the earth, the nose being the metal, and then the ear belonging to the water element. Now in the next row, we see that even, uh, even taste have also been categorized into each of these five categories. Oh, and so being sour uh, or sourness is in the wood category, bitter is in the fire category, the sweet Sweetness is in the earth category and so forth. Uh, but this is not enough, all right? I mean, the Chinese have categorized all these things. Uh, so how, the question now really is how do these things interact with one another? And that's where uh, I want to introduce the law of mutual promotion and the law of mutual subjugation to all of you. Uh, looking at this slide here, uh, the solid line shows the direction of the law of mutual promotion, whereas the uh, dotted lines show the direction of the law of mutual subjugation. Starting from water at the top here, we see that the water promotes wood, the wood then promotes fire, fire then promotes earth, the earth promotes metal, and the metal promotes water and that's the uh, law of mutual promotion. Um, as in all systems, uh, we need to have, we need to instill some form of control, and in this case, the law of mutual subjugation as the control. And if we were to start from the uh, water in, on the slide here and follow the dotted lines, we see that water subjugates fire, fire subjugates metal, uh, metal subjugates wood, Wood subjugates earth, and earth subjugates water. And putting this into the perspective of uh, traditional Chinese medicine, let's look at the next slide here. And we see that the, in this slide here, we see that the organs have been 
uh, put into its uh, re into their respective uh, elements. So we have the liver in the wood element, the heart in the fire element, the spleen in the earth element, the lung in the metal element, and the uh, water in uh, excuse me and the kidney in the water element. Um, so basically, if we were to follow the law of mutual promotion, what we have here is that uh, liver, liver will promote heart, and the heart will promote spleen, and the spleen will promote lung, lung will promote the kidney, and the kidney will promote liver. And likewise, if we were to follow the law of mutual uh, subjugation, we see that the liver will subjugate the spleen, the spleen will subjugate the kidney, the kidney will subjugate the earth, uh, excuse me, the heart, and the heart subjugate the lung, and the lung will subjugate the liver. So the question is, now what happens if the lung is misbehaving? And so if the lung is misbehaving, uh, one way to treat the problem is that we can have, we can treat the fire, or we can treat the heart, because the heart in this case is controlling the lungs. So as long as we, we make sure that the, uh, the heart is, is in good condition, we can then be rest assured that the, uh, the heart will play its role and uh, subjugate the lung and make sure that the lung is not misbehaving. Uh, on the other hand, we can also uh, uh, treat the kidney because we know, that, uh, we know that the lung, according to the law of mutual promotion, that the lung promotes the kidney. So we want to ensure that the kidney is not putting too much stress on the lung and so we just, so we need to make sure so we, we can treat the kidney and keep it in, in good condition and make sure that it's not stressing the lung out. Similarly, if you look at the law of mutual promotion, uh, we know that the spleen promotes the lung. And so again, if we were to treat and make sure that the spleen is in good condition, we can also be rest assured that the lung is being, being taken care of. So that's the whole idea about uh, applying the law of mutual promotion and mutual subjugation uh, in, uh, in TCM. Uh, and so in a nutshell, uh, I have introduced the two concepts to you, concept of uh, yin and yang and the concept of the five elements. So yin and yang establishes two extreme ends, but two extreme but complementary ends in nature. And the concept of the five elements help us to see how the different things around us interact with one another. And so these two concepts uh, are being brought into TCM and help develop the, uh, the whole uh, theory behind this ancient, very ancient traditional medicinal system. Uh, as a side note, something that is not relevant to TCM is, I, I just want to point out that uh, the uh, in fact, the idea or the concept of the five elements is not only being used in TCM, it's also being used in, in, in the everyday life of uh, ancient Chinese. In fact, uh, uh, as far as I know, people in Hong Kong, in Malaysia, in Taiwan are still uh, uh, using this idea, this, this concept of five elements to look for uh, potential spouses. So in other words, if, if you are a man, you want to look for uh, a, a wife, you want to consult, you want to consult this, um, make use of this particular concept. Uh, uh, so what, what I'm trying to say is, assuming that I belong to the wood element, uh, I would want to look for a wife who belongs to the wood element. It's, it's, if you look at the, uh, the law of uh, mutual promotion, it's going to be water, because water promotes wood. So I want to go around and look for a, a woman belonging to this wood category so that she could promote me and help me in my life or in my career and, and so forth. Uh, um, however, this is, um, uh, I, I got to point out that this, this whole concept is, is, uh, uh, is based on uh, a very, very, um, uh, was developed in ancient times. So it may sound very very chauvinistic at times but uh, there's a whole idea of uh, um, uh, TCM, I mean the whole idea of uh, five elements being used in the everyday life of uh, ancient Chinese.
And now I want to turn our attention to the, uh, uh, the traditional Chinese herbs, or traditional uh, medicinal Chinese herbs. Uh, as shown on the screen here, we have uh, uh, these are four of the very, very common uh, medicinal herbs that are used in TCM. Uh, these are in the dried forms, and um, uh, for people who do not, who have not encountered traditional Chinese medicine, these things look as if looks like they are things that are meant for the dumpster. But um, but trust me, uh, they are not. Uh, now the Chinese have uh, categorized um, medicinal herbs into uh, four properties. The first being hot, second being cold followed by cool and warm. Uh, in addition to that, they also uh, categorize the uh, um, flavors into the yang flavors and the ying flavors. And uh, what we have here is the pungent and sweet are the yang flavors and the sour, bitter and salty are the uh, ying flavors. Now again, uh, this slide shows that uh, the same uh, four herbs that I've shown, uh, that I've shown earlier, but this time the herbs are in the live form. Um, so the question now really is, um, how do we go about using these plants as medicine? Now in TCM, if the uh, disease is Diagnose, uh, is being diagnosed as being a mild disease or being uh, uh, something not severe, uh, generally one particular plant is being used. Uh, and so in this case, here, if you look at the slide, uh, Cotanopsis um, is, being used as, uh, is being used to help replenish the vital energy. Um, and similarly for Zizifus, it is also being used to uh, um, uh, replenish the vital energy, but in addition to that, it is also being used to help relax uh, the nerves. Um, so, for mild disease, it's simple, straightforward. What about um, severe disease? I mean, uh, this is when uh, TCM practitioners would then utilize uh, not just one, but uh, many other uh, uh, medicinal herbs. So. Uh, in this case here, a prescription, a TCM prescription is generally being, uh, being uh, used and in any TCM prescription, uh, four main ingredients are being found. The first one being the principal component or the principal ingredient. The second being the uh, adjuvant ingredient. The third being the correctant ingredient and the last being the guidant ingredient. Now the principal ingredient um, basically is the chief or the main uh, herbs that, being, that is being used to treat a disease or to uh, reduce the symptoms. And, uh, and sometimes uh, what the TCM practitioners will do is that they will want to incorporate uh, a second uh, ingredient which is whose um, effect may not be as strong as the chief uh, ingredient, but it's being added simply just to uh, complement and strengthen the, uh, the principal uh, component. Uh, and sometimes uh, when we have the two, when we have the principal and the adjuvant component together, sometimes uh, these this two uh, herbs combined together may, may result in, in, uh, in toxicity. And so this is when we will have to add a third component, which is the uh, correctant component, uh, to help reduce the toxicity and to prevent or to reduce any side effects uh, and to reduce any side effects as a result of uh, using the principal and the uh, uh, adjuvant component. And the last component is the guidance uh, component. And this is being used basically to help to channel all of the uh, the channel the herbs that are being used to the appropriate or to the affected um, uh, uh, area. And in addition to that, the guidance component is also being used to coordinate the uh, effects of uh, or 
the uh, therapeutic effects of uh, the um, herbs that are being used in a prescription. And so let's, uh, let's look at a real uh, an example of a, a um, TCM prescription. Uh, shown in this slide here is the uh, prescription for Ma Huang Tang or the uh, uh, Fidra soup. Um, as seen here, four components are being, uh, four herbs are being used. The first one being a Fidra, herba, uh, refers to um, the plant, the whole plant itself. And then we have the uh, cinnamon. Uh, Romulus refers to the twigs or the branches of the cinnamon. And then the uh, semen of the um, apricot, the bitter apricot, uh, semen refers to the seeds. And then the last one being the, uh, the roots of licorice. Um, this this um, prescription here is generally being used to treat uh, coal. Uh, when someone is suffering from a cold syndrome, uh, basically when you have too much of the yin energy in the system, uh, uh, this prescription, prescription is being used to help dispel that excess yin energy. Um, um, and so the chief the, or the major uh, ingredient here is ephedra. And then cinnamon, uh, cinnamon is added here as an adjuvant. Uh, Cinnamon is added to help to complement uh, the ephedra, and um, it basically uh, the effect is to help stimulate uh, perspiration because it is believed that um, uh, perspiration will help to bring that coldness out of the system. Um, and then, of course, the uh, the third ingredient is the uh, bitter apricot, and the last one, which is uh, licorice. Uh, licorice is used here as both. Uh, uh, um, the correctant and the uh, uh, guidant ingredient. Well, this slide here is, um, is something that I want to show you. Uh, the two pictures are taken when I was uh, doing my field work in uh, southwest China. Uh, it's taken in, in a hospital. Uh, the picture on the left shows a counter, in fact, two counters. The first one counter is for the dye traditional medicine and the one on the right, uh, the counter on the right in the first picture is a counter for traditional Chinese medicine. And then the picture on the right is a counter for the Western uh, medicine. Um, what I find interesting here really is that uh, uh, three different medicinal systems are being used um, in the same hospital. Now having said that, I have to, um, I, I, I want to point out that um, each of these medicinal systems are being um, uh, practiced by uh, people who are trained in, in that respective uh, system. So in other words, the dye medicinal system was, was uh, the doctors are essentially uh, people from the dye ethnic minority uh, who, have been, uh, who have learned and studied the system for many, many years. And similarly for the, for the uh, TCM, uh, the doctors are uh, uh, real TCM practitioners who have uh, been trained in this uh, system uh, officially in schools and also the uh, Western medicine are being uh, practiced by uh, doctors who have been trained in uh, uh, the uh, medical biomedical sciences and the next slide here is, I put this in, um, I just want to let you know that uh, currently there is this huge interest uh, throughout the world uh, um, in uh, TCM. And so uh, we, 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 we ha we're, we're getting a lot of uh, TCM practitioners working alongside with, uh, with biomedical practitioners or biomedical researchers to try to understand the uh, the 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 inner workings of TCM from the standpoint of uh, uh, biomedical science, and this is this is this is. Um, in fact, uh, uh, when I was in Hong Kong, I know that uh, there's one university in Hong Kong. Uh, they actually have this department, uh, 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 whose uh, whose 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 job, whose research interest was to look in, into this uh, into this area, and and so with that, I like to end. 
uh, this presentation with this question uh, as shown here on the slide here. Basically, um, should one try to understand traditional medicinal systems without uh, first understanding the philosophies behind these systems and why? And in fact, uh, this question is not only is not uh, uh, is not meant for traditional Chinese medicine. In fact, it's meant for uh, uh, any traditional medicine in the world. And, um, and before, and in fact, before if anyone were to come to me and ask me and tell me that they are interested in studying the uh, in studying uh, the ethno medicine of a particular particular group uh, uh, or particular culture in the world. The first thing that I, want, I would tell this individual is that they really, really have to first uh, have a good, solid understanding of the uh, philosophies uh, behind the system before they, uh, before they move on and learn about the plants that are used in the system. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, email me or um, ask anyone to, um, or ask any TCM practitioners that you have that you come across.